Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for March 9th, uh, 2023, uh, Thursday, March 9th. I said this week we we're talking about parables, and we're going to look at another parable from uh, Matthew 13 uh, this, today as well. It's the parable that uh, we used to know it as the parable of the wheat and the, and the tares. Sometimes it's called the wheat and the weeds, and let me read it to you briefly. He put them, Jesus that is, before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. And so when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. As I said, it's often used to be known quite often as the parable of the wheat and the tares. Uh, that's just a word for a, a, a kind of a species of, of rye grass uh, that apparently bears close resemblance uh, to wheat, especially in the early stages, it's only at the very end uh, that the difference is uh, is discovered. And so it was; it grows uh, um, plentifully, apparently, in Syria and Palestine. So uh, this this parable made a lot of sense because this was something that happened all the time. And so what you would do is you would just wait uh, until the until the harvest time, and then you would separate them. Um, it's a story; it's a parable. It's also what we would call an allegory. Um, where uh, the, in the story all the, the characters and the events are symbols of real-life people and situ situations, and that's what we have here today. So actually in verses 36 to 43, Jesus explains that the one who sows this good seed is the Son of Man, for instance. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of God, um, of the kingdom, the weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sow them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. So everything in the story has a corresponding um, uh, person or situation in, in real life. And, and it talks about the, the existence of evil in the world. There's a story about a young seminarian who was taking an or, oral examination as part of the ordination process. And during the questioning, one of the examiners asked him if he believed in a personal devil. No, he replied, I do not believe in the devil. Hearing this, the examiners began to discuss the seminarian's fitness for ordination, and they were actually on the verge of disqualifying him when one of the older faculty members spoke up. He said, well, don't worry about this young man's present disbelief in a personal devil. This whole thing will take care of itself. He won't be working in a church for more than two weeks before he changes his mind. I thought that was a cute story. Tony Campolo actually has a, a, an interesting uh, take and explanation of this parable. Uh, he writes, I grew up in a church that had a pretty negative view of what was going on in the world. They greeted the bad news that highlighted the headlines of the daily newspapers with a certain amount of glee. And when they learned that there were wars breaking out in the Middle East, they shook their heads and said, these were the signs of the times. And when the, they heard of earthquakes and massive destruction in China, they said, well, the end is near. And when they read the statistics of rising crime rates, the prevalence of abortion, the increase of sexual promiscuity, and the overall decline of morals, they simply smiled and said, this is evidence that we're living in the last days. They seemed to cheer, he said, the maladies of society, for their theology was such that they believed that the world would get worse and worse and worse until it got so bad that Jesus would have to come back uh, to keep the world uh, from being overwhelmed by the powers of darkness. The bleak news in the papers only assured them that we had just about reached that point. And there's some truth in what they said, for Jesus told us that there would be an increase of evil in the last days. In the parable about the wheat and the tares, he made it clear that the kingdom of evil represented by the tares grows greater and stronger every day. But he also made it clear that the wheat, which symbolizes God's kingdom, also grows stronger and stronger every day. What Jesus was telling us in this analogy is that we should never be so pessimistic about history that we fail to see the positive things that God is doing. Nor should we be so optimistic about history that we do not see that the kingdom of evil is also growing in power 
and presence in our world. The kingdom of evil is growing up, but so is the kingdom of God. And the church will not limp out of history as a battered, beaten entity. Instead, it will march out of history triumphant. And in that final hour, the kingdom of evil will be destroyed. I remember he says so well being invited to the home of one of our church members on a hot Sunday afternoon. And back in those days, she was one of the few people who had an air-conditioned house. And she told me to rest and take it easy while she prepared dinner. And so I sat down on a special lounge chair she had in her living room. She pushed a button and the chair began to vibrate, creating a most soothing sensation. I could smell the chicken cooking in the oven. It was wonderful. And the television was on and I was watching the Philadelphia Phillies trying to win the pennant. And from the kitchen, this dear woman carried on a long monologue about how we were living in the last days. And when I asked her what evidence that she had that the, the coming of Jesus was at hand, she talked about how Christians were suffering and how that suffering was all the evidence that we needed. Well, it was hard for me to grasp what she was talking about, he said, as I sat there in that vibrating chair, smelling the chicken, feeling the comfort of her air-conditioned home, and watching my favorite baseball team on television. I thought to myself, if this is suffering, bring it on. We all know that there is suffering going on in the world today and that Christians are being persecuted and even martyred, he writes. But outside, but amidst, rather, the evil that we see out there, we must recognize that everything is not negative. There are spiritual revivals going on around the world. There are movements to achieve social justice more evident than ever before in history. If you look for them, there are signs of a glorious and peaceable kingdom breaking loose among us. The kingdom of God is not only coming, but in many respects, it is already growing up in the midst of us. Interesting take, uh, hopefully that uh, a helpful interpretation for you as, as much as I have found it. Well, we'll continue tomorrow uh, with another parable. Actually, uh, tomorrow and Saturday, we're going to go back to the parables that we had two weeks ago and then this past Sunday. I uh, hope you can join us. We'll talk to you then. Bye.